Hi, my name is Johnny Lass and today I'm going to take you through the configuration of Extension Mobility Cross Cluster on Communications Manager 8DX. Okay, so let's begin. So, the first thing that we need to do is to ensure that three essential services are activated and started. Those being the Cisco Call Manager Service, the Cisco TFTP Service, and the Cisco Extension Mobility Service. These three services, in general, should already be activated anyway if you have conf configured extension mobility. But let's just check that on this cluster we already have this enabled. So as you can see, um, the Cisco Call Manager Service, Cisco TFTP, and Cisco Extension Mobility Service are already activated on this server. So there's nothing for us to do. But if you find they are not, just check the checkboxes and click Save. So let's go back to the administration page and add the extension mobility cross cluster service. As you can see from the find, by default there is no extension mobility cross cluster service. So let's add this now. So let's give it a name, a description, and the URL. You can find this in the configuration guide, but it's also posted at the bottom of your screen. So now we check the enable checkbox and the enterprise subscription checkbox. Now the enterprise subscription checkbox is not mandatory, however I have done this to save some administration later on. Basically by enabling enterprise subscription it means that this service that we've just created will be assigned to all devices and all user device profiles by default. Otherwise, if you don't want this, you can obviously afterwards selectively choose which devices subscribe to the extension mobility service. Okay, so the next step is to add a device profile. So we can go to device, device settings, device profile, and then click add new. So let's, let's choose a device type. So let's go Cisco 7975 and device protocol skinny and let's give it a name the phone button template is mandatory so we need to select this the soft key template is not but I will choose this anyway and let's save Okay, so next we need to give this device profile a directory number. So let's do that now. Let's save that and return back to the user device. Okay, next we would usually have to subscribe to the Extension Mobility Cross Cluster Service if we had not checked the enterprise subscription but as you can see it's not listed in the select service because we have checked enterprise subscription next let's create an end user now I am I am creating a user here but in most cases if you already have extension mobility enabled in your environment then your users will already be set up and user device profiles will be associated. Okay, before we click save, as you can see, I have neglected to enable extension mobility cross cluster for this user. If you have already got users set up for extension mobility, and now you are extending this to extension mobility cross cluster, this is most likely one of the configuration points which could be missed because the end users have not had this enabled previously. Now I'm going to leave this unchecked for the moment but this is definitely part of the configuration that needs to be enabled. Okay so next we need to enable extension mobility on the IP phone and also subscribe the extension mobility cross cluster service to the IP phone. if you had not checked enterprise subscription so if we go down to subscribe and subscribe again like the user device profile you will see that it does not exist because 
it's an enterprise subscribed service so every device will have it and the device we need to enable the extension mobility checkbox and save and again if extension mobility is already used in your cluster then this checkbox will most likely already be there okay so the configuration done thus far should be common across both clusters home and remote that being the services enabled Cisco call manager Cisco TFTP and Cisco extension mobility as well as the device profile created extension mobility cross cluster service added and subscribe to devices or enterprise subscription checked add new users associate device profile to those users enable extension mobility cross cluster for those users and on the phones enable extension mobility and subscribe the extension mobility cross cluster service if extent enterprise subscription service is not checked so all that configuration should be done already on your home cluster and your remote cluster so as you may have realized the configuration we just did was basic extension mobility configuration which most users already have set up so let's move on to the MCC specific config so let's log into the OS administration page from security bulk, bulk certificate management and here we need to enter an SFTP server which is reachable from both home and remote cluster so a common SFTP server they must be both be able to reach this and once we click save the call manager will check that it can reach this specific SFTP server it can take some time and then we can export our certificates so we change certificate type to all and then export now remember that this has to be done on both home and remote cluster so once you've done export here you should go to your remote cluster and also do the same procedure as you can see the call manager can see the certificates it just exported and we can also see them on the SFTP server so let's do the same on our remote cluster so security bulk certificate management I already have an SFTP server entered from previous configuration and export as you can see you can also see the certificates from the home cluster which we exported a few moments ago we'll export these certificates now from the remote cluster and they should also appear in the SFTP server in a moment okay so once the page refreshes there you go you can see all the certificates and on the SFTP server we should also see them yep okay so next we need to consolidate those certificates only one server needs to do the consolidation so you can pick which server home or remote you click consolidate change the certificate type to all and then consolidate when we wait a moment we shall see that there are two new certificates created on the SFTP server there you go and now those certificates need to be imported back into each the home and remote cluster so we click import this is on the remote cluster all import and then once this is done we go back to the home cluster and do the same the order does not matter you can do them in whichever order just we have to ensure that we first export from all clusters to the same common SFTP server we consolidate from one of the servers it does not matter which one we click consolidate and then we import back into all servers okay so we have finished with the certificates for the extension mobility cross cluster next we need to go back to the unified serviceability page 
and enable the bulk administration service. We could have done this earlier when we were checking the call manager service, uh, TFTP and extension mobility service, but I wanted to create some kind of separation between the basic extension mobility configuration and the extra configuration needed for extension mobility cross cluster. So let's enable the Cisco bulk, bulk provisioning service even. Click save. Okay, so now the service is activated, let's just check that it is started. By default it should be, but let's just check before we go any further. Okay, so we can see the service is started, so we can move on. So let's go to the Cisco Call Manager administration page. And next we need to create a common device configuration. So under device, we go to device settings, and then to come up common device configuration. We can just call this uh, something along the lines of default common device configuration. Um, we can also give it a soft key template. I don't think this is necessary as there is no asterisk next to the soft key template, which means it is not a required parameter, but let's assign one anyway. And then let's click save. Okay, so now we need to go to bulk administration, EMCC, EMCC template. Let's add a new template. So let's call it something like EMCC device template, just to make things easy. We need to select device pool, SIP profile, and also the common device config, which we just created, and click save. Okay, now we need to go back to the bulk administration and insert update EMCC. Update EMCC devices and use the device EMCC device template we just created and run it now and then we click submit. We can check that the job is successful from the bulk administration and job scheduler. We should see that it once we find the job it is successful or completed. There we go. Okay, so now we need to go back and insert update EMCC again insert and let's choose five devices for instance and again run immediately and submit and then we can check again from the bulk administration job scheduler to make sure everything went okay and as you can see the insert device is completed okay so next we need to go to system and enterprise configuration and here we need to configure a cluster ID now this cluster ID must be unique across each cluster so for this I've just selected on my home cluster the name of the server. We also need to add a geolocation filter. So let's add one now. And click save. Okay, next we need to go to EM, under Advanced Features, EMCC, EMCC Feature Configuration, and we need to configure the default TFTP service, the EMCC Geolocation Filter, the default server for remote cluster updates, and then save. Okay, so we're nearly there. The next thing, under Device Trunk, Need to add a new trunk and it will be a SIP trunk and the trunk type will be an extension mobility cross cluster. So let's give the trunk a name. Device pool. And we should also ensure that we check that we have a SIP security profile, SIP profile. Then finally we need to enable the send geolocation information and click save. Okay, so next we need to go to advanced features, EMCC and intercluster service profile. We need to enable the services which we require and assign the SIP trunk which we just created and then click save. Next we go back to Advanced Features, EMCC, and add a remote cluster. Now, here you will see why the cluster ID needs to be unique. 
So it's requesting cluster ID here. And obviously you cannot have duplicate cluster ID. So let's return back to the remote cluster and let's check the enterprise parameters for the cluster ID. Okay, so let's copy the cluster ID from the remote cluster to the home cluster. And then once we've done this, we can add a fully qualified domain name or IP address. Okay, so next we also need to add the cluster ID from the home cluster to the remote cluster. So if we go to System Enterprise Parameters on the home cluster, copy and paste the cluster ID to the remote cluster. So Advanced Features, EMCC, EMCC Remote Cluster. We add the cluster ID and then the IP address or FQDN. We hit Save. You'll notice that it does not detect that it is working yet, so we update remote cluster now. And now we see that everything is activated. We do the same on the home cluster. We also we enable the services, save, and then update remote cluster now. Okay, so now we're in a position where we can test our EMCC. The device you see here is registered to my remote cluster, and I will try to log in with my home user Robert Jones so for the user they, they attempt to log in as they usually would to extension mobility and to them the experience is transparent so they enter their user ID and PIN and then click submit As you can see, we are receiving the login unavailable error 31. If you remember, under the end user, we forgot to configure the extension mobility checkbox. However, I want to take this opportunity to show you the features and services guide, which describes to you how to configure EMCC and some useful error codes towards the end of the guide. So you can use Google to locate the Communications Manager 8 feature service, features and services guide. The URLs are also posted at the bottom of this video, so you can get to them quicker. And if you check one of the last links, you have troubleshooting EMCC. Now here you have different codes, and they're quite descriptive. So the one we saw was 31. So if we scroll down, 31 it describes EMCC is not activated for the user, occurs when enable EMCC checkbox is not checked in the end user window of the home cluster. So this is why I left that checkbox previously. So let's go back to Robert Jones and let's check enable extension mobility cross cluster. Save. And then we can test again the extension mobility cross cluster. And as you can see, this time we are successful. So that concludes today's video on Extension Mobility Cross Cluster. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.